Hour number two. Fox Sports 910. Take the points. Jackson Groff joining you here. You can follow me on Twitter, all social media, at Jackson Groff. Ben Garcia has left the building. He's on his way to the red-white scrimmage for the Arizona Cardinals at State Farm Stadium, which starts at 115. Parking begins at 1215. So with that being said, we talked a lot of NFL in the first hour. And for those who know me personally, I am a diehard, I don't want to say analyst. I'm, I'm just I'm just a, I, I'm a nerd when it comes to college football. And we are three Saturdays away from Florida State, Georgia Tech, and Dublin, Ireland. And I understand for people out there and folks out there, it's not an intriguing matchup. But it's college football, and that's what we love so much. So coming up this hour, we're going to talk SEC preview to start off. We're going to break down the conference from a sports betting perspective, who's favored, break down who are some of the teams that can contend for the SEC, let alone college football playoff, and then give my take on the conference and predictions and who I think is going to win the SEC. Then we're going to do the same thing and preview the Big Ten Conference, break down some of these Pac-12 teams that have left the Pac-12 RIP, USC, UCLA, Oregon, Washington, all departing and going to the Big Ten. What will they look like next season, and what do the sportsbooks think of them? And then we're going to talk about the college football playoff and college football um, betting-wise in terms of the awards, the Heisman, who's favored to win the national championship, the week one odds. And then we got Casey Walsh here at the Sportsbook to kind of talk about NFL preseason and what's going on here with college football futures. But let's start out with the SEC Conference college football two teams added into this conference texas and oklahoma come from the big 12 the odds on favorite right now at plus 185 is the georgia bulldogs no no surprise there followed by the texas longhorns at plus 350 alabama at plus 700 ole miss plus 750 lsu plus 1000 and it goes on and on a and m tennessee missouri oklahoma i can go down the list let's start out with georgia this is a team in the Georgia Bulldogs that's been known for a weaker schedule. They've lost a lot of talent on the offensive side of the ball. Ad McConkey, Brock Bowers took their talents to the NFL. So this offense is going to look completely different, but the constant is Carson Beck. Carson Beck coming last year, a lot of pressure on him. Not a lot of people knew who he was. Big, big shoes to fill with Stetson Bennett, two-time national champion. But what Carson Beck did last year, was one of the more impressive quarterback performances and why he's the number one quarterback in my eyes heading into college football this season. He's got an 80% completion rate from 0 to 20 yards down the field. Further than that, he's got a big cannon. He's 6'4". He's smart. He's been in the program for four to five years. He comes back with four out of the five offensive linemen. Anytime you've got your offensive linemen coming back, you've got new defenses on the other side of the ball. But you've got both coordinators coming back, and you've got a legendary head coach in Kirby Smart. Georgia Bulldogs aren't going anywhere. They're definitely going to be a contender for the SEC. The biggest addition when I look at this Georgia team, though, is the transfer, the Florida transfer running back, Trevor, Trevor Etienne, the brother of Travis Etienne. This is a guy from Florida, two years, 1,000-yard running back, but comes to a team in Georgia where I think they're going to lean on him more because of how depleted – and how new this wide receiver core, a new tight end in Oscar Delp, is going to be. Trevor Etienne is a guy, and you can't bet on college football props, but this is a guy I'd look out for, and I would put money on that he he not only leads Georgia in rushing, 1,000, 1,200 yards, but leads the conference in rushing. I think they bank on him with an offensive line coming back as well. For the wide receiver core, they got Dominic Lovett, who's going to be a breakout wide receiver, a transfer out of Mizzou. Um, this is the guy that produced last year. He's their leading wide receiver. 54 catches, 613 yards, and four touchdowns. He comes back. And on the defensive side of the ball, you return your All-American safety, Malachi Starks, as well as another guy to watch out for, C.J. Allen at the linebacker position. But my overview on Georgia is their win total right now is at 10.5, right? There's 12 games in the season, 10.5. You need them to be 11-1 and heading into the SEC Championship. Georgia's usually known for having a weak schedule. And I get it's Georgia Bulldogs, so you shouldn't concern. But their schedule's tough, folks. They not only play the top, the other three SEC contenders, Texas, Alabama, Ole Miss, in their schedule, but they're all road games. So you play Clemson to start out the season to win. Tennessee Tech at Kentucky, 
You have a bye week, you go at Alabama. At, they haven't been to Alabama since 2007. Playing in Tuscaloosa is going to be a hostile environment. I do expect Carson back in the boys with, with Jalen Melrow and things going on with Kalen DeBoer, and I'll get to Alabama in a second. But I expect Georgia to go in there and win. The game that's going to be tough, and I, I'm looking at the odds right now, and it's kind of a 50-50 game, is at Texas. This Texas team is damn good, folks. And this is a team in Texas coming in to the SEC from the Big 12 with the NIL money they have, with how Steve Sarkeesian's finally got the team and the vision that he set that he's been wanting to do his whole entire college career. But not only that, for Texas to have a bunch of wide receivers go to the NFL, a bunch of defensive players go to the NFL and reload, and not only reload out of the transfer portal, but get guys in Isaiah Bond at wide receiver. That's the same skill level as Xavier Worthy, not as fast as Xavier Worthy, but a mix of between Xavier Worthy and A.D. Mitchell. And then you get a guy in Aaron Nimblack at tight end that's kind of the same similar style to Jachavion Sanders who was there last year, kind of that flex hybrid tight end that really opens up the field for those one-on-one outside matchups for Isaiah Bond and John Tick Cook on the offensive side of the ball. You got Quinn Ewers there, a quarterback, a guy that's been in the system for about three or four years. Say what you want to say about Arch Manning. Oh, Arch Manning's going to play over him. Jackson, what are you talking about? Quinn Ewers can play football, ladies and gentlemen. This is the year, I think, that he takes another breakout season, and I think Texas has a good shot at making the SEC championship. But back to Georgia. They go at Texas. You go at Ole Miss. You got Tennessee at home, at Alabama. So it's going to be a big test for Georgia. They finally, the SEC, going no divisions this season. You're going to see Georgia in certain road games. That's going to be a test for them. But if they can go out and you know, win 11, 12 games, Definitely a lock to make the college ball playoff there at minus 600. I mentioned the Texas Longhorns. They've got a lot of five-star sophomore guys to mention. John Tay Cook being one. Um, also, Am- Amari Nimblack's his name. Sorry, Amari Nimblack, the tight end. Him and Isaiah Bond come from Alabama and go over to Texas. Those two are going to be impact on the offensive side of the ball. C.J. Baxter has a bigger role at running back. This is a guy that split carries last year with Jonathan Brooks. Jonathan Brooks gets hurt, ACL, talented running back who's now on the Panthers. C.J. Baxter comes in as a sophomore. This sophomore class is going to be phenomenal for Texas. Texas's win total right now is also at 10.5 too. So those two, in my opinion, are, are the championship contenders, national championship contenders for the SEC Conference. We get to kind of a Tier 2. This is the Alabama, this is the Ole Miss of, on paper, really talented. Kalen DeBoer, Jalen Murrow, the, the connection those two have and what we saw with Kalen DeBoer doing with Michael Penix and what he can unlock in his game and how he transformed his game from what Penix was at Indiana to what Penix was at Washington. You know, the, the, their ability to throw it all over the yard, the three 1,000-yard wide receivers they had at Washington, the offensive mind creativity. I think it does hurt that Ryan Grubb didn't leave the OC that's been following him his whole career. Goes to Alabama and then took that job for the Seattle Seahawks. But I think this Alabama team definitely can, can be in contention for a college football playoff spot. Could potentially be in contention for an SEC championship. They're just going to have to win. They're going to have to lose only one game in the SEC. They can't lose two. You got Georgia at home. You got at Tennessee and Missouri at Oklahoma, and obviously you end with Auburn in the year, and you go at LSU. So for this for this Alabama team, plus 700 to win the SEC, I don't know if they're going to win the SEC personally, but when it comes down for them to make the college football playoff and for them to represent the SEC, they're at plus 100 right now. Something to note there. But Alabama, um, another team that returns four of their five starters from last season on the offensive line, uh, another wide receiver core that's going to look a lot different. That's my only concern with Alabama is how will Jalen Milrow adapt to the new wide receivers who haven't had a lot of reps from last year. I mean, their leading wide receiver coming back production-wise is Kobe Prentice with 314 yards, 18 catches. So that's something to note with them. A team that's really interesting. And, and Lane Kiffin finally gets his team, fifth year in the program, 11-2 and two last year. You return to quarterback Jackson Dart is Ole Miss. I, I think this Ole Miss team can win a national championship if they perform well in the SEC. This is a team. You look at the schedule. It's on the easier side. And I don't say easy because the SEC is not an easy conference. But in terms of Georgia's schedule versus theirs, I'm looking at Phil Steele's magazine right here. Um, it's ranked 40th in, in, in all of the FBS in terms of schedule. You open up with Furman, Middle Tennessee, at Wake Forest, Georgia Southern, Kentucky, 
at South Carolina at Lowe's too. There's a, there's a point in the schedule I'm looking here. They go six and zero. Oh. Their toughest game is going to be home against Georgia, home against Oklahoma. Maybe later in the season if they get things figured out. But this is a team I think in Ole Miss, and I'm looking at their over under total at nine and a half. I think they can win ten games and be a ten and two. I think they lose to Georgia, and I think they do get clipped and either at Florida later in the year at the Swamp or potentially at LSU. Maybe they get too comfortable. Maybe they get too comfortable with the outside noise, and they get one of those clips there. A ton of teams. I could go on and on and talk college football about all these teams, but real real quickly as we wrap up this segment for the SEC preview, I'm going to give you kind of my overs I like in terms of win totals and unders I like in win totals, and then we're going to talk about the Big Ten next. When you look at win totals, two overs I like. And a confidence level I have of 8 out of 10 is the Alabama Crimson Tide to win 10 games. I like the over 9.5 wins. I think they get it done. I think I think Georgia's going to be a tough game for them. But outside of that, I think there's games that later in the season when Kalen DeBoer and Jalen Monroe get on the same schedule, get on the same wavelength, I do think they come out and win. I like the over for that. Another over I really do like, and I think this team takes a step forward, um, is Oklahoma. And I think Oklahoma's schedule is going to be really tough this season. They've got one of the tougher schedules in a new conference with a young quarterback in Jackson Arnold. And I don't really take too much from that bowl game against Arizona. Arizona's defense was phenomenal and late notice, the pressures, you know, him being his first ever starts in college. He's had the whole offseason to deal with. But they've got a really tough schedule. Home against Tennessee at Auburn. They've obviously got Red River with Texas at Ole Miss, at Missouri, home against Alabama, wrap up at LSU. I like them to get over eight wins. Now, my confidence level on that, I'd say probably a 6.5 out of 10. But those are two, and I look at the over-under totals and win totals, I like the most. Lastly, these are two unders I, I'm really confident on. I'm shocked. Texas A&M, over-under total, win total is 8.5. Eight 8.5 and a half wins. You think Mike Elko in year one? With Connor Weigman, a quarterback coming off of an injury, sophomore, they lost a ton of talent in the portal. It's a big mess that Mike Elgo is going to have to come in and fill, and I think he's the right coach for it. But I think in year one, they win six games. I like the under for Texas A&M. feel really confident about that. And lastly, I can't believe this team was ranked fifth in the preseason poll. The LSU Tigers, folks, are not winning ten games this season. I'm sorry. They are not winning ten games this season. When you look at their schedule, and I refer to schedule a lot on, during this segment, but you have to when you, when you bet on a win total. USC, they should win. Also, bet the over on that game as well. Both teams hate playing defense. And both teams, I understand, LSU's got a new D corner from Mizzou. USC's got a new D coordinator. Both teams s- still don't like to play defense. USC, they win. Nichols, they win. At South Carolina, week three is going to be a tough game. UCLA, they win. South Alabama. But... Ole Miss, Alabama, Oklahoma, at Florida, I think are some really puzzling games. And for that 9-5, and five, you got to hope if you bet the over that they win 10 games, I think there's easily three or four games on the schedule. I can see the LSU Tigers losing. You lost your quarterback, Jaden Daniels, the Heisman winner. You lost your stud wide receivers, Brian Thomas Jr. And, oh, my gosh, I'm blanking out on his name. Number one wide receiver taken off the board last year for LSU. So I understand that LSU lost a lot of talent last year. And I, I just I do not buy in on the hype. Um, Malik Neighbors. Malik Neighbors was the number one wide receiver last year. I just think they lost too much. Um, if they can use Harold Perkins on the correctly on the correct side of things on the defensive side of the ball, see ball, get ball, see quarterback, get quarterback, then I'll believe in this LSU defense. But I just think them only returning six starters on both offense and defense. I think it's going to be a tough year for LSU, and I like that under nine and a half wins.